Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. And I like this story. I like this story for several reasons. Uh, one, it's absolutely brilliant news uh, in terms of a boost, major, major boost for the economy. Uh, secondly, it uh, it really sort of it cements uh, Britain's place as a leading industrial giant. Uh, we can uh, we can hold our head high and say, look, we're supplying the world with a valuable resource. And of course, the main one is that it doesn't half annoy uh, the SNP and the Greens uh, generally, uh, but it really annoys Hamza Yousaf and Patrick Harvey in particular, with the tiny little man stamping his tiny little feet in disapproval. Uh, and that, of course, brings me no end of joy. It's fantastic. And what is this marvellous thing of which I speak? Well, it is, of course, that Rosebank, the, the biggest oil field out there, has been given the full go ahead. Uh, they can commence drilling. And of course, as I say, this will secure the jobs and the economy of Aberdeen and the greater Aberdeen area for well, generations to come. Uh, is that there's a lot of oil out there uh, and it will make sure that um, the industrial northeast area around Aberdeen will securely be, um, you know, cont continue to have a lot of jobs, a lot of investment, and it will bring high powered um, sort of industrial, technical, scientific jobs to an area that would otherwise not have them at all. Um, the oil fields have been an absolute boon to Aberdeen. And of course, the, the stupid thing is from uh, the SNP front is even if they did get independence, they would absolutely positively have to have oil. There's no getting away from it. Anyway, we'll have a look at the story and see uh, what the, the great news is for most people and how awful it is when you're Patrick Harvey. Here goes. So Hamza Yousaf accuses Tories of climate denial after Rosebank Oilfield gets go ahead. Well, I don't think anyone's denying that there's a climate. I don't know what he means by that. Any anyway, Rosebank, which is 80 miles west of Shetland, has been approved by UK regulators amid a storm of protest from eco campaigners, because of course there is. But if you go and ask these eco campaigners what we can use instead of oil, they haven't got a clue. Oh, they go, oh, electric cars, as though the only thing we dig out of the ground is petrol. It isn't. All the other things that oil makes, and trust me, thousands upon thousands of different things. We need oil for so many different things. And there's not one of them can say, well, you can make it out of that, or you can make it out of this, or you can make it out of something else. You quite clearly can't. Because if we could, you'd think it wouldn't have already happened. Anyway, Hamza Yousaf has accused the Tories of climate denial after the controversial Rosebank oil field got the go-ahead. The First Minister said he was disappointed with the decision and he said it risks our transition to renewables. Um, like I say, you can't. You can't transition to renewables. You haven't got the facilities to do that. Uh, and if you think digging oil out of the ground is dirty, try digging lithium, um, you know, and all these other things they need. Try digging all these rare earth metals. It's, uh, that's a fairly nasty business as well. Anyway, Rosebank, which is 80 miles west of Shetland, has been approved by the UK regulators amid a storm of protest from these eco campaigners. The massive offshore development, the largest untapped field in the North Sea, now has consent for development and production. Rosebank is estimated to contain 500 million barrels of oil, raising fears drilling there will undermine the climate uh, country's climate policies and credentials. Now, their credentials are pretty shit, to be honest. Let's be honest, because they keep saying, oh, there's a climate emergency. Uh, well, if there was an, an emergency, as he put it, he wouldn't be getting on a plane and flying to New York for something or a meeting that he could have had on Zoom. So there's no real emergency, is there? And uh, since we're going to need oil for the foreseeable future, and I'm talking hundreds of years... Um, where does he think we're going to get the oil if we don't drill it ourselves? Well, we'll go to dirtier places in the world where there's not as many, let's just say, um, economic uh, reasons for being uh, cleaner and environmentally protective. Um, and we'll get the oil there and then we'll transport it halfway around the planet because that's how oil gets moved. So it's even worse for the environment than if we drilled our own. Very strange, isn't it? 
Uh, anyway, so we, 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 you have this man who doesn't understand how oil works, doesn't understand what oil is used for, and doesn't understand that transporting it is worse than drilling it yourself. And he sits there and dares to lecture us as he's on his flight to New York. It comes after Tory Prime Minister Rishi Sunak last week swung the axe on key UK net zero targets because they're unachievable uh, and unaffordable. That's basically it. Uh, by delaying and watering down policies to phase out petrol cars and gas boilers because there is no option. Also, uh, on an aside, and I've mentioned this before, um, since you're still going to drill oil because you still need oil for all the other things you need oil for, what are we going to do about the petrol? Nobody can answer this question. Nobody has ever answered the question, what are we going to do with the petrol? Because you can't just let it evaporate into the air because it's even worse for the environment letting it evaporate into the air rather than burning it. Uh, and you can't just store it because it represents such a risk, such an explosion risk. Um, and so if there was only some way of getting rid of it. <clears throat> now, somebody may say, well, why don't you just burn it? OK, let's just burn it. If only we had some kind of machine that we could burn petrol in and get useful work from. We have. It's called the internal combustion engine. These people are so stupid. They are absolutely so stupid. Uh, anyway, Yousaf, posting on Twitter on Wednesday morning today, said, I'm disappointed Rosebank has been given the go-ahead. We've raised concerns that the majority of what is extracted from Rosebank will go overseas and not remain in Scotland or the UK, and thus making lots of money that you can use to invest in social care and the NHS. He says, we're investing £500 million, so workers in the industry transition from fossil fuels to a net zero future. He's wasting £500 million attempting to do something that is quite clearly impossible. He says, we recognise the significant contribution the oil and gas sector makes to Scotland. However, our future is not in an, uh, an unlimited oil and gas extraction. It is in accelerating our trust just transition to renewables. New oil and gas fields being approved risk the pace of that transition. No, they don't. How do they possibly risk the, the pace of that transition? You just said we'll be selling it abroad. Well, if we're selling it abroad, we're not using it here. And therefore, it won't alter our pace of transition. The man's a moron. What is he on? Can I have some? It sounds good. Uh, he says in the, uh, in the face of a climate catastrophe. Oh, it's gone up. We've gone up, folks. It's no longer a climate emergency. They've been talking about climate emergency. It's now a climate catastrophe. So why is he getting on planes? Why is he driving cars? Why isn't he taking the train or riding a bike? It's a catastrophe. Why haven't they closed down Euro Disney? Why is Vegas still got all the lights flashing? Why are we still allowing private jets? It's a catastrophe, folks. But not if you're rich. It's only a catastrophe for the poor people who are going to be kettled into their 15-minute ghettos. Not a catastrophe for the rich on their private jets, you understand. Former First Minister Nicola Sturgeon also spoke out against the decision to approve Rosebank. Well, presumably because she doesn't want a lot of money available to build better prisons in order to keep her. Uh, she posted on social media that she agrees with Green Party MP Caroline Lucas, who described the move as the greatest act of environmental vandalism in my lifetime. No love. Being born. You being born was a terrible act of environmental vandalism uh, because people are the worst of the worst. We need to stop having people. Anyway, she added, Sturgeon this is, also by consuming scarce resources that could be going to renewables, it, re it risks slowing the green transition and the jobs that come from it. What scarce resources that goes to renewables? You mean digging up holes in the ground to get all the materials to make um, the uh, solar panels? Do you mean digging up all that bauxite to get the... Uh, Aluminium to make those huge pylons where you cut down 16 million trees to put up these bird choppers. Yes, yes, that's terrible for the environment, darling. Uh, anyway, Scottish Greens co-leader and government minister Patrick Tiny Harvey blasted. After abandoning wider climate policy last week, once again, the UK government is wrecking our future. He doesn't actually speak like that, of course, but he is very small and it just sounds like that. Anyway, he said hundreds of millions of tonnes of carbon emissions, no benefit to energy price or security, no just transition for workers. Is he talking about those 16 million trees they cut down? 
Who knows? Uh, these people would literally burn your future for profit. Tell me, Patrick, in your wisdom, what are you going to use instead of oil? How are you going to make plastics? What are you going to do about the medications? What are you going to do about the agricultural uses? What are you going to do about the lubricants? What about all these things? Hundreds upon hundreds upon thousands of things we need oil for. Tiny little man with a tinier little brain thinking that what you're pulling out of the ground is only used for running cars. This is the trouble you've got. Morons. Uh, Tory Scottish Secretary Alistair Jack said, it is great news that the regulator has given Rosebank the green light. And it truly is. And I'm, I guarantee the people in Aberdeen will be very, very happy about it as well. He said, the North Sea has a huge role to play in ensuring the UK's energy security while we transition to net zero. It's not all energy. This is the trouble. Again, he's, he's right, but he's wrong. He's talking about energy. It's not all energy. We don't burn oil. We burn gas to make electricity in this country. Predominantly, we burn gas. If you want a truly green environment, you need nukes. You need lots and lots of nuclear power stations. For Britain, you need 36 built. 36. Get building. If you truly want to be free from using fossil fuel for fuel, you need nukes. Start building. However, you're still going to have to drill for oil. These people are morons. Uh, and I'll stop there. I've said enough. I've done enough. They know, we know it's a good news uh, because we do need oil, ultimately. Anyway, coming up. So there you go. I hope uh, I hope people up in the northeast um, are happy with this. Um, I'm, I'm sure that mostly they will be because, of course, it isn't just the people who work um, in the oil industry, you know, in the refineries and in the transportation and you've got the maintenance side of things and all that. So you, you've got a lot of people actually employed directly by the oil industry. But then you've got all the supply lines to it. Uh, and we don't just mean the technical stuff. You've also got people who will supply Servicing, you know, services within the these uh, great big places and where you know wherever they go, and then they have suppliers and they have suppliers. It's it's an endless feed, and it just makes sure that everybody is working all the way down the line. Plus, all that money in the local economy, it keeps the shops, the bars, the restaurants open. It keeps the the leisure centres open. It keeps the cinemas open. All of those create jobs, create an economy, and so it's more than just one. Thing. But of course, these morons in uh, Edinburgh haven't got a clue. They haven't got a clue about this. Uh, and they just think that it's petrol pouring out of the ground. And of course, it's nothing like that. Now, if there is anyone out there, and this is a genuine question, uh, and I re because I really don't know, if there's anyone out there uh, who does work in the oil industry and can please tell me, in case I'm getting it wrong, I'm, I'm not... I don't claim to be an expert in this. I'm, I'm, I'm going back to, you know, sort of basic um, chemistry and science lessons from uh, from years ago. But when you crack oil, when you when you uh, you don't crack oil, do you? When you uh, refine oil uh, and you get distilled fractional distillation, isn't it? You get the heavy stuff at the bottom and the, the ethers at the top. There is a part where you're getting your petrols, your diesels, your um, aircraft oil, um, aircraft fuel and things like that. Is there any product that can be made with those those particular regions, you know, that, that fuel stuff, that doesn't involve burning car, number one? And number two, is there any way of getting rid of petrol that doesn't involve burning it? I, I really genuinely don't know. I keep saying what's any, what we're going to do with the petrol because I don't know. So if anyone out there does know what we can do with the petrol, do let me know. I genuinely want to know because I can't think of a use for it other than burning it. I believe it's basically a waste product. I could be wrong, but let me know. Anyway, thank you very much. See, I'm, I'm prepared to admit that I don't know something. Unlike those idiots at um, Hollyrood, who would never say that, would they? Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Do please hit the subscribe button. We're getting very close to a nice target. Uh, and so if you're one of my regular viewers who hasn't yet subscribed, do please subscribe. Help me hit that target. But it also helps the channel and it keeps the truth coming out. So anyway, until next time, stay safe, stay well. And please somebody tell me what we can do with the petrol. Bye.